Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. <laughs> Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now, your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Today, my friends, I'm going to cover a topic that is so sensitive that I don't even know if I can get through it. I will do my best. That's all I can say. But... This is a topic about personality challenges based on success. And, of course, I deal with financial success, but these personality challenges really run the gamut. What I contend today, what I'm going to contend today, that is there is a continuum from one side to the other of personalities, one side being a type A personality and the other side being a type B The next contention I'm going to make, which is a little harder to take, and that is is most people are one or the other as a majority of their personal decisions. That one's a little harder to prove, all right, because I've found myself in some cases being a type A in some situations in some aspects of my life and then being a type B in other aspects of my life. And I think it has to do a lot with the personality traits and how they align with what you're trying to do. So more on that later. But at this point, my basic theorem is that most people are type A or type B. Now, I'm going to extend that theorem to take you into the realm of 30 years of consulting people. And for the first 10 years, I was the only consultant. I was doing all the consulting myself. So I had personal, intimate relationship with every member I had. At that point, I actually got to see this stuff firsthand. And I got to the point where I could almost tell you what a person was going to do or say about investments just by figuring out right up front what they were, type A or type B. And by the way, in most cases, it's very obvious what they are, either type A or type B. The last point I'm going to make here today, if I can get through it all, is that there is a way to utilize these driving forces of your personality to help you succeed. In other words, if you're a strong type A, you need to balance your type B. And if you're a strong type B, you need to balance your type A. Or if you can't, then you should have either a spouse or very close friends that are the other. So in other words, if you don't have the strength to personally balance yourself, then you need to have someone else that does for you. And I'll get into that as we go on. So let's first start by defining a type A and a type B personality. I'm going to start with type A because I'm mostly a type B. And so I'm going to pick on the type A's first. A type A personality is someone that we would say has what we call instantaneous gratification disease. What does that mean? That means whatever they want, they want it right now. This attributes all types of personality issues with that personality. For example, they can't wait. They want instantaneous gratification on whatever it is. They want it right this second. Now, this starts as low as the way you eat your food. Type A's eat their favorite food off their plate first and leave the unwanted foods for last. Obviously, type B's do the opposite. And it just goes on and on and on and on about type A's, is that another problem with a type A, besides the fact that they want it now, and it's never quick enough. My wife is a type A, so I will be discussing her throughout this whole show. And it's not without love for her. It's just understanding the way she approaches stuff is so different than I approach it because I'm a type B. So what happens is when she wants it, she wants it right this second. She will get on the internet and look stuff up and order it within five minutes of wanting it. She just can't wait. There is no wait in her time period at all for anything. So the next thing about a type A you have to understand, and another characteristic is, as much as they want something right now, they have to have it. They get extremely excited about whatever it is they're interested in or want to put into their life at that moment. The satiation is almost nil. 
In other words, the second they have obtained that which they were driving for, that they had to have, they don't want any more. It's all over with. They got it. The thrill was in the wanting, not in the having. In fact, type A's thrive on change. Anything that stays the same will drive a type A crazy. They have to change their stuff. My wife rearranges her closet on a regular basis. I couldn't tell you if it's once a month or once every two or three months, but I'm telling you there's no way to find anything. for. She doesn't have a spot. She rearranges the spots of everything. She'd do it to our whole house if I would let her. She would just move stuff to where I could never find it. Sometimes she does. I can't find stuff. She just takes it and moves it, uh, gets rid of it, puts something else in its place. But that's the way type A's work. They just got to have change. They will die if you keep them the same. It's impossible for them to be happy unless they're changing something in their life all the time. Type A's, because of this, cannot lock in on any goal long enough to succeed. So in other words, a type A believes in a bunch of theories. One of the theories, if you throw enough mud on the wall, something's got to stick. So in other words, it doesn't matter how many times a type A fails. Type A's believe failure is, there's no such thing as failure. Losing all of their money every single time they do something isn't failure to them. It's education. It's completely different than how type B's think. They will tell you things. In fact, there's all kinds of self-help gurus out there. Tony Robbins, here's one, one of the greatest type A personalities I've ever met in my life. Tony Robbins' first book came out, said, theory, fire, ready, aim. Now, what does fire, ready, aim mean? It means do something. Then figure out if it was the right thing to do. Don't think about if it's the right thing to do first. Just do something. Get up and get going. That's what a type A needs to be doing. Enough mud on the wall means something will have to stick, as if you take enough shots, you'll get there, no matter what. Mark Cuban said, if you're not failing, you're not trying. Mark Cuban said, you know, lots of these kinds of type A personality things that just says, just go out there and try it and fail and try it and fail and try it and fail. Robert Kiyosaki is the same way. Robert Kiyosaki said, look, I've started hundreds of businesses in my career, most all of which have failed But none of my investors ever got mad at me because I always let them be the first person into my next deal. Now, for those of you that are type A's and don't see how stupid that comment is to a type B, if you ever failed on me, I would never go back and invest with you again, let alone want to be the first person into your next crazy idea. But see, type A's don't see it that way. It's like, okay, that one didn't work. Next, try something else. I remember having a guy on my two-day seminar one time, and he purchased my program, was going to get mentored. And then a week later, I happened to be going to one of these uh, different kinds of business seminars where they tell you about 20 different businesses, in-home business expo type thing. And I saw this guy there, and this guy had just given me a large sum of money to consult him, and here he was. He had five more businesses he'd purchased. I said, what are you going to do? You haven't even started using the one you purchased for me. And the guy says, just in case. Just in case one of these works better, just in case that one doesn't work, I've got all these. That's a type A personality. They can't focus even for a week on a new business before they're more interested in looking into another new business. And with type A's like this, they have challenges. And when we come back, we'll keep going on this. This is a long story, so you've got to stay with me the whole show. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're talking about personality challenges and how they affect your investment career um, and also your marriage and your life and everything else for that matter. So, uh, we've discussed the fact that the theorem is that there's a type A personality, a type B personality, and they're exactly opposite. And I was discussing the type A personality, which is the person which has something called instantaneous gratification disease. They want something, they want it right now, and when they get it, they're not satisfied, they want something else. They're never satisfied. Type A personalities are never satisfied in the long run. Whatever they have, they want something different. So what this creates is challenges. 
Because they're so quick to change their mind, they won't take the time in most cases to do massive due diligence necessary to make the right kind of financial decisions for your life. They're very bad with money. In fact, I tell people laughingly, I said, if you want to know if you're a type A personality or not, here's the way you check. If you're single, you're broke. Why? Because type A personalities believe that money is like blood. What does that mean? It's got to be flowing for you to live. Money is not something to hold on to for a type A. That stagnation would be like cutting off your blood supply. They've got to earn it, spend it, earn it, spend it. And I'm not saying type A's aren't earners. I'm saying they're spenders. They've got to earn, spend, earn, spend, earn, spend. No matter how much they make, they will end up not having a lot of money in the bank, not having a large retirement savings. Just won't work unless maybe they have a 401k and they've built up enough personal strength to not take the money out of that. And that's why I think a lot of people like the 401ks because if you're a type A personality, they take it before you see it so you don't spend it. Now, what about if you're married? How do you tell if you're a type A personality? Well, if you're the person that your spouse won't let carry the credit card or the checkbook, then you're a type A personality. If you have to go back to your spouse and say, honey, can I get the checkbook for this? Or honey, can I get the credit card for this? That spouse has cut you off because you're a type A personality. And they realize that you're dangerous to the family, to yourself and to the family. And they're there to help you by cutting you off from access to the money. One of the things that's interesting about type A's is that if you let them, and this is basically what you do, you take your type A out, you put a noose or a collar on them, I'm sorry, like a dog, and a chain and a spike in the backyard and let them run around, 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 and they think they're getting somewhere. And they're happy. It's just they have to move. You just can't tie them down. you got to let them run. And the same thing with a, a you know a person type A personality. What you do with them is that you give them a certain allowance and say, here's the amount of money you can spend it any way you want so you, they don't feel like they can't do what they want to do. But you don't let them get to the big money because they will wipe you out and they will never admit it. They can't even possibly in their own brain conceive that they'll wipe you out. If you let them have control of the big bucks, it's over. Type A's cannot make and save money. They will save And then they'll see something shiny in front of them, and they'll buy. And they'll buy all night long. Some of them sit up all night long on the phone and buy all night long over the Internet. Now, when I had cancer, I went through a bout of this. I I know what it's like. I was sitting there thinking I was going to die, and I started buying stuff over the Internet. And it's an addiction, dude. I mean, you can find anything you want, and it will be delivered, and you can just keep buying, and you can get every kind and shape and color. Whew, man, that's an addiction. But that's what type A's have. They have an addiction. They have an addiction to spending, an addiction to buying, an addiction to wanting. That is their thrill in life. So they have a very hard time ever getting ahead financially if they're not associated with a type B somewhere. Let's talk about type B's, and we'll come back to type A's and go back and forth. A type B is someone who has analysis paralysis. Yep, I said it. You know them. The grumpy old man syndrome, although it could be a grumpy old man or a grumpy old wife or a grumpy old person, and sometimes even grumpy young people. But it's that person that doesn't want to take action. Type B people don't want to do anything. And the reason they don't want to do anything is because, number one, they don't want to risk what they have. Type B personalities never make mistakes. Why do they never make mistakes? Because they never take actions that they're not 100% sure are safe. How do you never be wrong? Never have an opinion. That's the perfect reality of a type B personality. They will not change unless you absolutely force them to change. Now, why? Type Bs don't like activities for a couple of reasons. One, whenever you go to do something, especially if you have a type A spouse, The type A is going to be excited about doing things, but as soon as the doing is where something serious has to get done, the type B has to step in. So every time a type A starts something, the type B generally has to finish it for them. Type Bs don't like activity. So everything you start, every new idea takes massive amounts of research on the type B's part to feel comfortable to move forward with the new idea. So 
they will do everything they can to avoid this. What are some of the tricks that type B's have to avoid the pain that type A's give them? Well, the trick that I've built up in my life with type A's is let them do whatever they want to do and go, great, go research it, go look at it, go find out about it, then come back and tell me. Just don't give them the checkbook. Just don't give them the credit cards and say, you know, you can go research whatever you want. When you do that, you get the best of both worlds because the type A will go out and do massive, massive research because they love that kind of stuff. And then you as a type B sit back and have them bring you all the information and you pontificate on it. Uh, yes, it will be daylight tomorrow. Uh, you're correct. Summer will show up soon. You know, bees can pontificate on everything because they're never wrong. Why are they never wrong? Because they never deviate from the norm. They stick to it all the time. So you talk about type B's. I joke all the time. When I married my wife or when we first started dating, she threw out all my underwear and bought me all brand new underwear. I go, what did you do that for? And she goes, because you've got all of this religious underwear. I go, what is religious underwear? She goes, it's all holy. It's been 10, 15 years old. I took care. Same. Nobody sees your underwear. And she goes, you're a millionaire. You can't wear that kind of underwear. I said, okay. And I said to her, okay, that's fine. I'll do that. And thank you for the new underwear. What did you do with the old underwear? She goes, I threw it away. I go, are you kidding me? She goes, what would you do with it? I said, I can make rags out of it. I can take it out to the garage and make some great rags out of them. And I can do something with them. And she's like, no. I said, I can wear them when I work out in the yard and I'm dirty and sweaty. You don't want to get the new ones dirty. She goes, no. And see, a type B just doesn't want to give up anything they have. Old, familiar, is comfortable. And that's what type B's like. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're discussing personality challenges and how being a type A or a type B personality can have a devastating effect on your life. So let's talk about what these challenges will actually manifest into as far as investing and so forth. A type A personality's typical reaction is to be excited about what they're starting, a new project, want to jump into it right away, and are not afraid of taking action and or investing money. So that is good because that means they're going to be out there many times as a type A and get to the deals, the good deals, whereas the type B's are analysis paralysis, and they may join up and they may take all the classes we have, which we have hundreds and hundreds of hours of classes, go to road trip after road trip after road trip and case study after case study, and finally a year, year and a half later, try to do something. But interestingly enough, type B personalities are the worst at following your orders because a type B personality has a strange belief system that they're the smartest person in the room. In fact, that may not even be true. It just comes off like that. What it really is, is that a type B personality wants to create their own idea. They want it to be their invention, their idea. So they'll take everything that I teach them and then come back and do it differently. And just because they're trying to reinvent the wheel, remember this, engineers keep creating different products that we don't need. I have a phone. I have 8,000 buttons on the phone. It does 18,000 things. and I only use camera and phone. That's it. All the rest of the stuff, games. I play games on it. That's it. Text. I'm sorry. Does a million things, but type B's demand to make there be newer and better and newer and better stuff on there. If it's not broke, it needs reinforcement is what they live by. They overbuild everything they build. When they buy a rent house, they over-renovate it. They do everything to the extreme and end up having very low profit because by waiting a long time, they end up getting the worst deal. Type A personalities get the best deals. And many times, type A's that come in and listen to our consultants do very well because they let the consultant be their type B. They go, I want it, I want it, I want it. And the type B goes, nope, that one's not right. They go, okay, but I want this one, I want this one. Okay, nope, that's it. In fact, my wife did that for me. She wanted a new home. She didn't want to live where I lived before we had gotten together because there had been other women in my life, and she wanted to get out of there. So what she do, she starts looking for houses, and I didn't want to move. I was in a perfect home in a perfect location in the city, and I want to stay there. But there was one problem. There was no room. There was not a place for me to do all of my personal stuff. She started looking. I gave her a goal. 
I said, I need an eight-car garage. If you can find an eight-car garage, I'll be interested in looking at the house. Well, not only did she find an eight-car garage, she found a 20-car garage and a 16,000-square-foot home. So it was beautiful. It was a dream home. It's the one I live in now. But the only reason I was willing to buy it is because when I found out that the seller was in a distressed situation and was going to lose the home if he didn't sell it. And so I was able to buy the house at 60 cents on the dollar. That's why I was willing to buy that house. And of course, it had all the space I needed, the 20-car garage, which allowed me to put together a gym and put together my workshop, put together my train room and all the stuff I wanted to do for my hobbies. And type B's have these hobbies. The crazy stuff that they do is just, it's hobby stuff. They just want to collect stuff and, and do weird things. That's another type B problem is they're collectors of stuff. They collect stuff. So I was able to utilize her type A personality to go locate a great deal, use my type B personality to negotiate a great deal and end up with a beautiful home at a very, very good price. That's the way you need to work as a team with your spouse, is you need to be able to let the type A do all the hunting and let the type B do all the killing and the operating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what happens when you get to be with two type Bs? Because, see, I'm a type B, and I've gone out with Bs before. And what happens is is if you go out with Bs, the ability for two type Bs to get together is devastating as far as your success in life. I've been with another B and we go, okay, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. Should we go somewhere? Yeah, let's go somewhere. Where do you want to go? I don't care. How about a movie? Yeah, it'd be great. Okay, which movie? I don't know. Which one do you want to go to? I don't really care. Okay, well, what about this one? No, I don't really want to see that. Okay, what about that? No, I don't really see that. Okay, that's not going to work. What about dinner? You want to go out to dinner? Yeah, let's go out to dinner. Okay, where do you want to go? I don't know. I don't care. How about here? No. And goes back and forth. You end up doing nothing. You sit at home and do nothing all the time. Type A's go, woo, let's go. And type B goes like, let me get my hat, you know, hold on, get my coat and we'll go. Because if you're smart about being a type B, you let the type A put fun in your life and or get you out there to find opportunities. But type A's, you've got to listen to. You've got to be on the other side. Now, one of the tricks, and here's the problem, and this is what stimulated this whole thing. I had a guy contact me the other day and say his wife wasn't going to let him join up because he'd made so many mistakes in the past. My friends, there's a rule called Rule 1437B-7 in the Book of Life. And what it basically says is no one will believe a thing you say once they've seen you without your clothes on. Or in other words, familiarity breeds contempt. So once a person sees you for what you really are, if you're a type A and you make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake, it never satiated, never satiated, never happy, never happy, never happy. Pretty soon they get it and they're just going to cut you off and they're going to start with the assumption you're going to fail at whatever it is you do. That's all there is to it. They're going to start with that assumption. I see that with wives and their husbands all the time. You know, you're, you're an idiot. You're my idiot husband. You never make the right decision. If it's the other way around, usually in our structure, the power structure, the male's the one that's always right, and the female's the one that's always wrong. The male generally takes control. But you see these matriarch families where the wives are the ones that make all the decisions because the husbands are complete idiots. Now, what does a matriarch wife do but marry a matriarch husband? If her mother was in control of the family, she's going to look for a guy that she can boss around. Doesn't matter. Not against any of that. What I'm telling you is you need to understand that. So women, if you are in control of your husband, then you need to let him hunt. But then you need to go find out if he is right. What I tell, and I've seen people do this all the time. Women used to do it to me all the time because I'm the type B. I tell men to go do it to their type B wives, and this is the way it works. You go to them and go, look, I know I make a lot of mistakes in life, and I don't see things sometimes that you are so wise at seeing. You have so much deeper understanding of some of this stuff. So I found something I think is really interesting and really looks effective. I want you to come with me and tell me what's wrong with what I'm seeing. Because quite honestly, I could be completely blind to the fact that this is a scam. Why don't you come with me and just tell me what's wrong? I've had people come to the seminar like that, and within an hour and a half to two hours, the controlling type B spouse hearing me, another type B talk, says, this is absolutely the right thing to do. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it right now. That's the difference. A B will only listen to a B. Bs hate type A salesman. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, man, you think you want this? This would be a good thing for you. It really work. Or, hey, you you like it? You like it? You put it on? Come on. You try it. You try it. You try it. You try it. You go, oh, no, that one. That one's perfect for you. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, over here. Try this one. This one. This one. Man, a type B 
will die under that kind of pressure sales. And I get emails all the time where they run into somebody comes in, you, you're, you're trying to pressure us. No, we're not trying to pressure you. In fact, I am the exact opposite. I tell people not to do it. I say do massive due diligence on us. In fact, very infrequently over 30 years I've been doing this radio show, do I ever get on here and do anything like a sales pitch? So we'll take a short break. Be right back with the final segment of the Dell Walmsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Today, we've been talking about the challenges that your personality might bring to your success financially, and it brings it to everything else you do in life, too. I mean, if you're a type A personality, that type A just goes through everything you do, and if you're type B, it goes through everything you do. I've discussed the fact that over 30 years, I've had to deal with these people. And in most cases, like I said, listen to this carefully, I've only dealt with type A's that come in with a spouse. They said, well, why is that? Because most type A's are broke. They cannot do something like this because they can't come up with money. In fact, time and time and time again, everybody wanted me to change my program. I had people that work for me wanted me to change and, and start teaching wholesaling and flipping. And that's not what the, our program's about. That's a type A personality trait. Go out there and work and work and work and locate and locate and locate and wholesale and flip and flip and wholesale. Doesn't that just tire you out just saying all that stuff? That's not what we do. We're slow, consistent. Remember the tortoise and the hare when you were a kid? I'm the tortoise. Do de do do de do do de do do. But we win the race in the long run because we never get lost, get thrown off the track. Type A's lose a fortune, make a fortune, lose a fortune, make it fortune, back and forth and back and forth. Or maybe not even a fortune, just enough money to live on and then broke, and enough money to get by and then broke. What I'm saying is that most Type A's don't make it to me without a spouse. So I've learned how to utilize the family dynamics. To help people succeed. Now let's talk about people that do show up without a spouse. Type B's, your biggest problem is you won't take action. You just won't take action. Analysis paralysis is going to kill you. And then in addition to that, you're going to want to invent the wheel, reinvent the wheel and do it your own way. So what I have to do with those types of people is I have to sit down with them and clearly make them understand that that is their personality, that they, A, number one, need to take action much sooner than they would normally get around to taking action. Number two, I need to show them that you can analyze things in a series of steps instead of all the way. What most type Bs want to do is they want to go into a situation and they want to find out everything before they'll even take a step. Now, I tell a joke, and I don't know if this joke can work on the radio. I have a story about a guy, type B guy, wanting to go on a date. So he shows up at the door on the first date, and he says, look, what I'd like to do before we go out today is I'd like to get your financial statement, I'd like to get your medical records, and maybe some referrals from the other men in your life you've had sex with. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all that home and put it in a spreadsheet. And that's the other thing. Type Bs cannot live life without a spreadsheet. And I've got hundreds of them for everything in my life. I'm going to put it in that spreadsheet, and I'm going to analyze how much I'm willing to spend to take you out on the first date. Now, ladies, if you hear that story and you're not cringing to death, then you're probably pretty strange because that would be a terrible approach to trying to find a woman for your life. However, they do the same thing when they're trying to find a deal. They will try to get every ounce of information out of the seller before they'll make any kind of commitment or make any move. That's too much. The way you analyze things is you say, look, hi, I'd like to meet you. Let's go on a date. The date is where you do the analysis. If you don't get the date, you don't even need to ask for the due diligence material. In other words, if you don't get into contract on a deal, or at least get a letter of intent on a deal, you shouldn't even go deep into the information. No, you get a cursory look, you get that first look, you get that whatever financials they're throwing out there on the street to look at, you get all that upfront stuff. But the deep stuff has to wait until you get into a letter of intent 
or into a contract. And we call that the date. Now you guys are dating. Now you're doing the dance. You're dancing back and forth and the seller's telling you what they want to tell you and you're asking what you want and you're finding out what's really that person is really like or that deal is really like. That comes later in the game. So type B, you got to learn to do that. Take analysis one step at a time and not try to kill it before you even make an offer. This is difficult. Very difficult for type B's to do, but you got to learn to do it. So I had to train myself as a type B to do that cursory you know, review and then go ahead and jump on something. Because if you don't jump on it, remember this. You're not looking for deals. We're looking for motivated sellers. And motivated sellers are found, not made. You have to run into somebody who needs to sell. And then once you find that person, then you have to motivate them to sell at a deal that you prefer. So deals are made, not found. So let's go over that again. Motivated sellers are found, not made, but deals are made, not found. So if you don't have the right process for going into a deal and taking the right steps, the first step, the second step, the third step, then the person you're trying to get to give you a good deal is just going to say, no, if I've got to give it away, metaphorically, I'm going to give it to somebody I like. And if you're not making me happy through the whole process, then I'm going to give it away at a loss to somebody else because you're being cruel to me. That's psychologically what's happening. Now, type A's, your situation is you need to learn how to do what you do well. Go locate deals and then get back with somebody who knows how to analyze stuff and or you take the time to learn how to analyze correctly so that you can make logical, strong decisions. A's can up their B game. B's can up their A game. And both of you can be successful if you just understand who you are, and what you're working through. Married couples, be honest with each other. Admit which one's the A and which one's the B and work in tandem for the success of your family's finances. If you do that, you then will also find out that your marriage will work a lot better also. Because why? Because it's not just some money. It's the quality of your lifestyle. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.